All right, welcome back to Modern Mondays here at Guardian Games in Portland, Oregon. For our first round here, I'm Travis Cooper at Portland Paper, hanging out with... Virgin Kali, it's good to see y'all again. Round one here, we're going to see a matchup between Philip on Grixis Shadow and Zach on Blue White Stone Blade. We know y'all like some Stone Blade decks, so we found one for you round one. This feels like a classic modern matchup here of two blue strategies. One's going to be a little bit more controlly, one's going to be more tempo-y. Both are going to have really interactive cards. I mean, I guess it's as classic as you get since the uh, <laughs> Stone Forge Mystic has been in the format, but I, I like to see a couple of solid known archetypes, but like, I don't know specifically how this matchup is going to go. Um, what do you think? Uh, well, I think it's going to depend a lot on the compositions of uh, main decks here. If uh, Zach is playing some Supreme Verdicts in the main deck, yeah, I coupled with Path to Exile, that can be a really strong way to interact with this uh, Shadow list. Yeah. But, you know, Shadow is going to have Stubborn Denial a lot of times for those Path to Exiles. You get Snapcasters for some value. Um, yeah, really, it'll be a really interesting matchup. I think it's pretty close to even. Yeah, and I think if Philip has snuck any copies of Kolagon's Command into his main deck, that'll help out a lot too, but generally speaking, a little heavy for a Shadow deck, but we will see. It seems like the Shadow list over the past year or so have really slimmed down um, on the three mana spells and maybe play like one or two in between main deck and sideboard. Yes, they are really tight on mana, so it's pretty difficult for them. So we're going to see some Bobble Trickery here. If you're not familiar, Mistress Bobble's going to let him look at the top of his library and then decide if he wants to draw the card uh, on Zach's upkeep. Looks like that's a no. So he's going to snap the fetch land to shuffle his library. Uh, if he'd liked the card, he could have gone to Zach's turn, drawn it, then fetched. It makes you feel feel really smart when you make those kinds of plays with the oh. shadow. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, just, you feel like a genius. As long as you remember to draw your card off Bobble. <laughs> then, yes, if you, you set it up, you're a genius. You fail to draw the card, not so great. But, uh, uh, here, but Phil is Phil a pro. Got the, he's, <laughs> he's got it. He's got it covered. All right. Phil gonna, Philip going to set up his graveyard here. Five cards in graveyard getting close to a real big fish, which he does not have in hand, but... That is one of the ways that the Shadow List uh, beats Control, is playing an early Delve Threat along with Counterspell backup after that. Yes. That can be very frightening. Just here's a 5-5 five five and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, usually to play your Shadows, you have to do a lot of uh, jump through some hoops, uh, pay a lot of life, use a lot of your mana, and so those are actually the least threatening mm -hmm. cards if you're playing a blue-white deck. Um, but the 5-5 five five on turn two is the thing you're really afraid of. But yeah. luckily for Zach, that did not happen. Yeah, I believe Philip working with a couple shadows in hand, a fatal push, a stubborn denial, and I think another thought scour. Yeah. Okay, so if we can lower the life total, that's a pretty strong hand. And that's pretty free against blue-white. There are decks where you have to watch it and see if you can let your opponent do the work. And then if your opponent's really heads up, they might not do that work for you. Uh, but against a deck like blue-white, you are less less inhibited, though blue white stone blade may be able to come out of nowhere and get you. And that's also an interesting analysis in that uh, Philip might not know that Zach's on stone blade. When you see you know, a couple hollowed fountains, etc., cetera, uh, you might just assume that your opponent is playing blue white control. Absolutely, and then you might get pretty aggressive. So he could drop a couple of shadows here, which would not be great into a board wipe, but would be pretty great if Zach's packing just a bunch of spot removal and pops. It looks like Philip's lacking a way to lose some more life here. So, I have to imagine Zach's not heavy on the board wipes if he's on Stone Blade, but he may still have one. Looks like he's got a copy of Mystic Sanctuary in his deck, which is a card that we've seen popping up in any island heavy deck. Because even if you're not cryptic locking people and doing mm -hmm. the, the bouncing over and over again, it's still just an incredibly powerful card. And it's particularly good against these Grixis Shadow lists in, that are using Thought Season Inquisition is a lot of times they'll take uh, the Path to Exile, the removal spell, and then with the fetch land, you can just put it right back on top, and they might not play around that. Yep, absolutely. So you can see here, Zach has a Spell Queller in hand, so that could cause Philip a bit of trouble. You cannot Stubborn Denial a Spell Queller, even if you get quite a bit. Can, f can Fatal push it, though, after you've already fetched? Yes, that's a fact. So here's a 2-2 Death Shadow. So 
So, <clears throat> looks like Zach is not going to let this shadow resolve, but Phillip's just going to go ahead and fatal push it, much as you called. And it'd be a pretty sweet time for a follow up, like a Teferi for Zach to bounce that Death Shadow, get a card. Not seeing it. I see Opt Force Mystic Sanctuary. Can't quite make out the other cards. Feel to ruin not everything you want in this position. Yeah, it seems like the Force Negation was to pick up this turn. Would have been nice to have that last turn. Yes, absolutely. So I believe Philip's looking at another another um, fiddle push, it is not clear that he is another source of revolt. But he does have the push, I believe, for the Stoneforge Mystic. I'm curious what uh, Zach's package is here. Uh, we have the Feast of Famine, which it seems like a lot of the blue-white decks are running the Feast and Famine, and the Jeskai decks are running the Fire and Ice. Um, so the Feast and Famine, when you're playing Spell Quellers, enables you to just use a lot of mana in each turn. Mm -hmm. And the pro black, pro green is pretty relevant. Highly. Yeah, being able to push through a Death Shadow deck's blockers when they're usually taking themselves to quite low life is incredibly useful. Looks like Philip there picking up a Gurmag Angler. So he's sitting on two Shadows of Gurmag Angler, a Fatal Push, and a Stubborn Denial. This is quite threatening. Usually one of the weaknesses of the Grixis Shadow deck is it is relatively threat light, but not this draw. We're going to keep a Frog Scour in that pile, maybe not get rid of quite all of them. Push your Stoneforge. I see Cryptic Command, Force Negation. I wonder if this will eat a Force Negation. I think we're going to Force Pitch Opt here. And is that good enough to Stubborn Denial? I absolutely would Stubborn Denial this. Ooh, not gonna. I wonder about, he may assume that Zach has something else to put the sword on. Or he may be saving it for any removal for his death shadow. It's hard when you're facing down to untap blue mana and your opponent force negations you. You might think they have another counter spell or removal spell up. Which so Zach had neither. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's always a little tough to read those hands. And it looks like Zach picked up another copy of Stoneforge Mystic. So even if the Stubborn Denial had been used to remove the first one in an effort to take away any target for the sword, it looks like it would happen anyway. So Mystic Sanctuary here going to top Force of Negation for reuse later, which is not everything you want to see about from Philip's side. Huh. Are we going to see a Stubborn Denial here? Yes. Okay. This was actually good thinking. I'm unsure of why Zach didn't just activate. Well, probably to hope to block when you equip it, but that seemed pretty greedy. That is pretty greedy. The upside's high, but I think Philip doing one better than I saw, saving that Stubborn Denial for the sword. Here comes. He may be concerned that there's another piece of equipment in hand and wanting to save a blocker. Might be playing around Zach activating Batter Skull. Yeah. Or activating Stoneforge, putting in Batter Skull. Yeah, could be Batter Skull. Um, <coughs> could be Zach setting up, say, another a sort of fire and ice and not having a blocker to stop the trigger. But then again, Philip is holding another shadow, so would have a blocker either way. The batter skull point is well taken. Okay, we're gonna make that shadow bigger. Go to eight, five, five shadow coming in. So Zach's gonna be able to tutor another piece of equipment with the other Stoneforge Mystic but not equip it on the following turn. I would be able to get a batter skull and make a germ, but oh, wow, there's two st <laughs> there's oh yeah. two, there's two the additional dead. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to have to use this cryptic to mm. do some uh, 
tapping the team. Yeah, and then we can actually, from here, we can start tapping the team Bouncing Mystic Sanctuary, uh, which is going to allow I think a tap every other turn. Yeah, well that's not really good enough here. Maybe. I feel like you're tapping, drawing, and ho hoping to get more action, or lands and Snapcasters. And then Batter Skull attacks. Does Zach have a, another land in hand, or is I do not see another land. I see a Stoneforge Mystic. Stoneforge Cryptic, and then we got the Force of Negation? Yes, just All because right. of the Force of Negation at the top of his library. So you really want to land here to play land so you can have Cryptic tap the team, draw a card, and then activate Stoneforge. Yes, um, but we are one short. We do have blockers and a path, and that's a survive. Zach, I think, going for that line, hoping to set up a little more. Batter Skull will definitely help. Yeah, that was an awkward situation where Zach put the Force of Negation on top of the deck with Mystic Sanctuary, um, where I, I might have liked a random card better than a Force of Negation there. Right. Um, it, was there an opportunity for him perhaps to fire off the Path to Exile and top it? I'm unsure um, without rewinding. For yeah, I'm not completely sure. I didn't recognize that path with the Gideon Spellbook. Okay. Zach's gonna gonna pack it in here. All right, we're going to sideboards. Right. What do we got? Take a look <laughs> at our options for both players. So for Philip here, we are gonna look at one copy of Engineered Explosives, one Drown in the Lock. A ceremonious rejection, two damping spheres, a collective brutality, two disdainful strokes, two Kolagon's commands, one Ashiok dream render, a Nihil spell bomb, a plague engineer, and two Alpine moon. Kay. Obviously, we mentioned Kolagon's command before. I think we'll probably see those. Commands are good. Um, I would definitely bring those in. If I was on the play, I like bringing in Ashiok. I think it's maybe iffy um, when you're on the draw, but the no search clause is pretty relevant against Zach's deck, who is trying to search up equipments. And then you just randomly hose like fetch lands, which can be great because Zach's probably playing a pretty fetch heavy mana base with Mystic Sanctuaries on the deck. Yeah. Um, so I guess I've kind of talked myself into bringing that one in if you have some worse cards to board out. Um, seems like you can kind of board out things like Street Wraith, et cetera, that mm -hmm. don't really do a lot except for Cantrip and lower your life total. Anything that you see in there that you uh, like? I don't I don't hate Drown of the Lock uh, to grab the Snowforge Mystic or to, to incidentally counter a counter spell uh, later in the game. I don't hate Collective Brutality because I think you're in a situation where you might be able to kill a Stoneforge and pull a uh, counter spell out of Zach's hand uh, early in the game. So I don't hate either of those either. Uh, I think I might be a little more down on Ashiok in this matchup, but I, I definitely see the point that it, it does have a good amount of utility. So looking at what Zach has, we see two copies of Timely Reinforcements, uh, Gideon of the Trials. I just got Oh, I think that's a Gideon Ally of Zendikar. Ally of Zendikar. Uh, Wrath of God, Supreme Verdict, two Disdainful Stroke, a Ceremonious Rejection, two of the aforementioned Ashiok, two Damping Sphere, two Rest in Peace, and a Celestial Purge. So I think obviously we're going to go for Celestial Purge at the very least. That Purge and Verdict are both uh, good cards to bring in. The uncounterability of Verdict is really important. I don't think I'd bring in Wrath, even though it's tempting to get a two for one. Just uh, Philip's going to probably side into more counter spells. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's the yeah. Verdict and Purge seem like the obvious wins here. Yeah, keep it simple. Timely yeah. reinforcements, yeah. absolutely yeah. not where you want to be against the Shadow. <laughs> if only you could let your opponent gain the life. Mm-hmm. The old Aria Flame against Shadow. Have you ever done that? I personally haven't, but I've seen it happen, and uh, there's there's a lot of emotion in that. <laughs> Seems like if you can pull it off without getting countered, it's sweet, but yeah. it's a you know, oh, it's tough. expensive spell. And they're going to be ready for it. So we do see the Drown on the Lock coming in here from Philip. I see a Snapcaster Mage, Polluted Delta Drown, Thought Seas, a Watery Grave. Zach here working with, is that two Think copies two, of yeah. Path to Exile and an Ops? Alright, we're going to have some bobble tricks. Hard to beat a lands, two paths, and an Opt in a format where there's no Cabal Therapy. Yep. So here we're going to see a Shocked in Watery Grave follow Thoughtseize. Bet he liked that card on top. Yep, so we're working with Path, Path, Opt, Cryptic, and two lands. 
That's a little frightening if you're Philip, I think. Depends on the texture of your hand, what you take here. He's going to take the cryptic command. Flooded strand pass. Bubble trigger. That's an interesting decision point that Zach ha had there to play the Hollow Fountain tapped or to play a Flooded Strand. A lot of times you want to save your fetch lands for late game uh, with getting the Mystic Sanctuaries. Yep. Um, but Zach was maybe wanting to be able to cast a path on Philip's instep without having to shock in. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. I might have thought about shocking in the Hollow Fountain, though this is also perhaps life total saving. And also I don't, we don't know what Zach has as his unknown card here. It could be another fetch land. I almost would have uh, played the Hollow Fountain tap for Zach um, the previous turn. But yeah, it's interesting that little micro decisions matter a lot in these matchups. Absolutely. We'll see if later he's <laughs> in a place where a Mystic Sanctuary would have meant more. Well, pick up his Spell Queller here off the opt. Spell Fortress, nice payment. Spell Queller is one of those cards that uh, feels very precarious in the matchup. Yes. But if you're Philip, how much removal do you leave in against a relatively low creature count? I think when you see Stone Forge and Spell Quellers, it's it's all staying in. Okay. <laughs> do you think there'd be a swap out for K Command? All right, oh. we're just going to create a clock. Here's Snapcaster Mage. No extra value, just start hitting you. Pick up his Stubborn Denial, that's the second one. I see a Death Shadow as well. Zach just taking a two, not going to flash on the Spell Queller to block quite yet, but I feel like if Philip doesn't play anything, Zach might play this Spell Queller. We're going to see a Snap Seize, I do imagine. This will probably get Quellered. Philip with the heads up attack first. Get in there while we can. <laughs> now this is always a, 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 a interesting spot to be in, where you have a snapcaster hanging out under a spell coiler. <laughs> the house of cards can fall down. <laughs> this could go in an interesting direction. So depending on the timing, it may not do everything you want. You don't want to have to kill that spell coiler at instant speed. So you can cast the snapcaster, doesn't mean you can cast the thought seed. We see a dismember, not a bad pickup. Very aggressive on the life total if he wants to go that direction. So he could dismember, snap, seize, which would be quite a bit of life loss, and still hold up stubborn denial. It's a bit much. I might not go that far. I'm going to run out the shadow, though. But Death Shadow currently a 2-2, two, two, fetch land available, easily a 5-5, five, five, can Stubborn Denial this, if he so chooses. I believe that's the play we're going to see. Actually, I see Explosives King, that's an interesting choice. So going to 8, we're going to see the Stubborn Denial. So no to that path, do we want to see another path? I would cast the other path. Let's see what happens. Zach agrees. He says, you got another one? Yep. And okay, Philip did have the go. other one, but yep. Which is a nice way to shield the fact that you're holding another stubborn denial. If you were committed there. All right. I think we might be worrying if we're Philip about that spell queller and not wanting to have to fetch and shock to cast the stubborn denial. Yes. Not Are another threat in hand, just the dismember, the drown, and the stubborn denial. I believe we're probably going to, we can't see drown unlock here. So Philip's going to go to six. Ooh. Ooh. Going to get a stone forge, and then also we're going to be able to fetch up the mystic sanctuary on Philip's instep and get a path back if we want. This is pretty frightening. If you are Philip. 
Unfortunately, holding up that stubborn denial doesn't deal with no. the threat that wow. he Oh, Zach again, going to run out that sword. I think this is your chance. If you're Zach here, <laughs> do you have the patience maybe to wait and run that through the Stoneforge? No, Philip, again, very intelligently was let the second path resolve with that blue mana up, which does maybe lead you to think that he didn't have another one. Uh, also, it would it be a bummer for Philip to like fight over a couple paths to exile, then be all tapped out, and your opponent just has to have a Snapcaster, board yep. wipe, Planeswalker, anything's really good at that point. Yep, so he traded a Death Shadow and a Summer Denial for two paths. I think that's good. Um, so who won the first game? This Philip is up a game here, so Zach is fighting back from the three Death Shadows and a Gurmag Angler that were presented in game one. All right. Dismember Spell Queller. Take two off it. Snap. Thoughtseize, go to two. I don't, he doesn't have a shadow, but. Yeah, he's at two. Uh, curious, how many, do we have Hollowed Fountain, Hollowed Fountain, Island, Glacial Fortress, Plains? Yes. So Zach fetch the plans and not a mystic not sanctuary. Not a mystic sanctuary, not interested in cryptic commands. Yeah. Our path. I might have been interested in those cards. Oh, oh. that's a good top deck. <laughs> that's not bad. We're going to go to one for Philip. We've got a drown in the lock. We are not letting that Stoneforge Mystic resolve. Then again, Stoneforge Mystic can now swing in and trade with a Snapcaster with absolutely no option. Countered, and then that would leave Philip with just a Snapcaster available to beat Zach down for 12. We got a reader. So Drown in the Lock, an extremely powerful card from Throne of Eldraine. I've had a lot of good experiences with this card. One, A blue and a black, you have the option to destroy target creature with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of cards in the controller's graveyard. And... Okay, interesting block here from Zach. I believe he doesn't, okay, he's <laughs> hard cast street raid. I guess if you're Zach, you have to expect that there's another threat following because otherwise you, you kill on the crackback with a plain old one, two. But Drown and Lock also has the option of countering target spell with converted mana cost less than or equal to cards in controller's graveyard. I've had really good experiences with this card. Is that Emery like pulling someone down? It is a merfolk. I like to believe it's Emery. It doesn't match the other Emery art, but it is definitely a merfolk. I think maybe there are other merfolk that, <laughs> that live in the lock. Oh, we do see Ashiok from Zack. He has brought this in. Exile your graveyard. No more Snapcaster stuff. No delve. Zack going to go to five off this Street Wraith attack. Here's a big boy. That right there is an 11 11. Yep. So really, this looked very difficult for Philip earlier in this game, but oh, looks this like is turned on a dime. I think I had a cryptic for Zach. That'll buy a turn. Yeah, tap leave, the a, leave a white up there. Draw a card. Okay, so we have a path isn't enough here. We're going to need more than that. Was that a spring verdict off the top? No, it was Phil again. Batter Skull. Batter Skull. <laughs> That's a card. So that shot. We got a germ shadow. here, Zach. Got a little germ. Yeah, yeah we got there we go. <laughs> Appropriate token. This, this gets awkward. Yep. Suddenly not as much pressure as we had a minute ago. So we can chump block, shadow gain four, take five. We force it. Batter skull can't be bounced and recast. So this is still a very hard position for Zach. This thing is massive. Yeah. 
Philip correctly pointing <laughs> out that trading, they're trying to kill this um, street wraith is not where you want to be. Um, I think the direct quotation was, this thing is massive. This thing is massive. You should block here. Um, so Philip going to take this match down 2-0. to zero. A lot of heads up play there. Um, that Grixis deck is not easy to pilot. No, and there was two instances where Zach felt safe um, hard casting and equipment um, when a Stoneforge was out to try to get a little bit more value equipping it on a Stoneforge the turn um, when uh, it came into play and Philip was able to have kind of surprise stubborn denial and counterspell um, when it looked like the coast was clear if you were Zach because you fought over something earlier. Zach won, seemed like Philip didn't have anything left. Yeah, Philip really good representation like misrepresentation of his hand in order to lure Zach into the greedier plays. Why did Zach scoop? I believe Zach scoop because even if he blocks the Death Shadow, which is an 11-11 with the Batter Skull, uh, he's gonna still fall down one life to four. He's not gonna be able to bounce. He's not gonna be able to, to bounce and recast the uh, Batter Skull, and so he's pretty much doesn't have an answer the next turn. It, yeah, I mean, it was maybe a little bit premature little there bit. because you could draw a Snapcaster to Verdict and then you'd have a Batter Skull out. So, um, but, you know, sometimes you've seen enough. <laughs> yeah, the Wrath is true. They, he did have board wipes in the deck, so. 